while for these teams to kind of uh, get up to speed with uh, the competitive scene, with um, you know competitive play and transitioning in the phases of the game. But Derp looks good. They have uh, some strong players on them, new to the scene. Uh, but what about Eastrek over here? Eastrek's been around a long time. Oh, Eastrek! Eastrek has been for quite, as you said, for quite a long time. They played together for a long time. Uh, they were so close so close but um you know they're they have to get to the pro scene they want to get to the pro scene and um they're just working hard at it i just really wish they would be a little bit more determined on their gameplay uh yeah uh each they're you know so each track right as i said right they've been around since uh the beginning uh of spl and uh some of these players have been around since even before spl started but uh, the Eshrek team, I think, formed uh, when SPL first started, and they've, you know, they've had some roster changes and and things like that. Uh, but they've been sticking it out, and I think they've been the strongest they've ever been as uh, as a team. Um, so I like to see that, and so we'll see what they do here today. They are actually uh, in a position where they can make it into the top two challenger teams. Same with Dirt, by the way. Um, let's uh, while we get some drafts going here, which is a harrower and a Claudessa bands uh, and then we have first pick coming out for derp let's take a look and see uh what their scores are in spl where their standings um i believe they're both undefeated teams at the moment or, or maybe they're four and two teams it's fine no these are both four and oh teams so they both had the same uh same record uh same top uh teams they need to um uh, one of these teams here needs to get two and oh record they need to get two wins to secure themselves into uh, a shot for top two, if uh, they somebody if they split teams uh, games here, they still have a shot for it because they'll be uh, tied for third place. Uh, and they'll have to battle it out um, in the next two weeks and really, really win their games. But if they if one of these teams can secure two wins today, it puts them in a really, really good spot uh, to make it into the top two. Yeah, and uh, see, undefeated, man, that is about to change. One of these teams will not be, one or both of these teams definitely will not be undefeated uh, at the end of this match, absolutely. Yep. And we also see our first bands, which is Harrower and Claudessa, and we have our first big boy, Team Derp, which is, will be Bastion. And then Bone Vermilion. So uh, tank heavy meta right now, So and there's only a few like really, really good tanks in competitive uh, strife. And Claudessa got banned out, so obviously Bastion and Bo are going to get picked up right away, right? So, uh, Bo, they're different tanks, though, right? Bastion and Bo are way different tanks. Bastion is kind of that front line. I'm going to peel for you and protect my back line. Bo is that kind of a tank that I got to get tanky so I can get to their back line and cause some havoc with my ult. Well, uh, Bo is what we call a, a virtual tank. Uh, what, what by this means is, on paper, he's going to do a lot of damage. But you know that's his his uh, that's his tankiness. You will be scared of it just because he does that much amount of damage, and not just that, because he repositions the team in order for them to don't do any damage. So that's virtually a tank, yes, but he does takes a lot of damage. So and Bastion, on the other hand, you can nook that that dragon, and he will still be there. It's it's two different tanks. Yeah, absolutely. Two different. Tanks. You're you're right on that. Bastion is is the tank of strife. Uh, and well, like, as you put it, a virtual tank. Good, uh, good terminology put there. Uh, that virtual tank. Yeah, and, and bow alt is so unique in strife. It's the only one of the. There's only two abilities now, I believe. That well, I guess Shank um, is in there too. But it's the only ability that can move multiple people at the same time on the map. You know, the bow alt, uh, the bull rush. It's so big at uh, team positions. Yep, and as we were saying that, we just see the be the Bex and Rook pick right there by the, uh, Team Derp. Team Derp, yeah, Rook, a highly a prioritized pick for a lot of teams. As a strong hero, you can put him in a dual lane, you can put him in a bottom lane. He does well in all of those situations. Probably this, one of the strongest uh, solo lane um, heroes in the game right now. Uh, and they pick up Vex. Vex is a strong pick, good support character. Some teams uh, prioritize Tinder over Vex, and some other teams prioritize Vex over Tinder, it seems. But they do pick up their Vex, and they got some options. Coming up here on Eshrek, uh, they pick up their ADC and then Vermilion, and they pick up that Ray. So we might see a Bow Ray lane, which is a pretty nasty lane, very 
very aggressive lane, lots of kill potential in that. Um, and they, they'll need to pick up somebody with that Vermilion. I'm going to assume they're going to get a Tinder uh, pickup uh, when it comes back around to their picks again. Uh, yes, it could, it could definitely be a Tinder. Of, they might actually send a raid to babysit the Vermilion and uh, just roam around from time to time. Uh, Malady. Malady is a very, very good pick uh, for them. Yeah, Either one teams right here. I mean, yeah. Uh, so she's a value on this on this drafter at the moment. Yeah, surreal gaming uh, obviously popularized that Bastion Malady uh, mid lane combination, uh, mostly to do not just because of the heroes. I mean, the, the the hero lineup is very strong, but obviously the players that play that on surreal gaming, you know, OJC and SMD, top tier players playing that Bastion Malady, they really make it work. Some other teams they try it and they and they don't do nearly as well. Uh, as they're expecting for it to, uh, as when they see Surreal Gaming do it. Well, it, it comes down to this, okay? Whenever it comes down to this situation, people have asked me, well, what makes the difference between a Master Striver and a non Master Striver? And I can tell you this the Master Striver has failed more times than the, than the non Master has even attempted, okay? So it's about keep trying, it's about keep going for it until you get to that point that you have completely mastered it. Uh, it's not going to come easy, it's going to come over time, it's going to have rough rough uh, roads, but you know, it's something that you have to uh, overcome in order to be that true master. And you're here to hear folks, master strifers everywhere. Do you want to be a master strifer? I, I, oh, I, one day. I don't know if I want to be a master strifer, but I can understand other people <laughs> wanting to be a master strifer. You heard it here first. And they got a Trixie Ain't pickup. Uh, so, Ray Trixie coming out. Interesting that they went with the... Well, no, they already had uh, they already had the Ray. Sorry, so... What pick, what, what, what pick order are we looking at here? I'm getting, I'm getting myself confused. All right, Team Derp is going to have the two picks, yes. followed by his uh, single pick. Uh, for uh, Derp, as I say, I would love to see that Malady. Malady Bastion is one of the oldest uh, lanes on the book and is one of the most effective. Yeah, it is, but Malady is hard to play. It's not an easy hero to master. Uh, I think Mal just the animations on Malady are, are tough and the ranges on Malady are tough. You have to be a very, very good strike player in your positioning. And uh, understanding, uh, you know, the animations of Mali for abilities to be effective, and also the wall, right? The only vector, uh, vector targeting ability in Strife uh, with the Golden Gate, uh, and you have to, you have to know how to handle that. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to fail at Mali. So we'll see. Hopefully, Derp uh, has a really good Mali player, and I would love to see a, a Bastion Mali lane here. Yeah, as as you say, I completely agree with you. The difference of uh, of a good melody and a bad melody is is huge. Is is ab absolutely like day and night. And what happens with this is just because just a couple of pixels forward or back is what makes the difference. You have to understand not just your vector, your uh, positioning, and your timing, or your animations. You have to understand the enemy's animations, positioning, and range. It's very important that you are on that golden spot in order to get those golden gates. Uh, uh, yes, yes, indeed. And last two picks, Blazer Carter, actually. Um, what do you think about Blazer and Carter being picked up? Interesting lane. So are they going to run a Vex Blazer and a Bastion Carter lane with uh, Rook in the bottom? Uh, I know that uh, Derp likes to send Blazer bottom lane, as a matter of fact. Uh, so, but they already have Rook. I'm not sure if they're still going to go with a Blazer. I'm gonna, I'm actually inclined to say that they will go with a Blazer bottom, but I might be wrong. Um, another thing, the reason why people pick Blazer against Vermilion is because Blazer has huge nuke in pot potential, and it will always start at her favor because she will come invisible and just simply nuke the Vermilion. Once the Vermilion is out, um, Shrek will be in a lot of trouble, so you want that chaos in order to um, for your drafter to work. Absolutely, and we are waiting for the very last pick over here on Eshrek. Uh, somebody had to kind of reconnect to the game, so they might have been waiting for that. And they are back now, though. 
So we'll see. We'll see what their last pick's going to be. So what would you think their last pick should be here? Do they need to get their bottom laner still? Or they could run tricks in the bottom lane. It's not very popular anymore. Still an option. Oh, they actually pick up Hail. So we're going to see a Hail versus either Rook or a Hail versus Carter lane uh, would be my guess. I'm still, I'm still a little bit inclined to say that Blazer might go bottom. Uh, as I say, Derp loves to put that Blazer bottom. Okay. And okay. Uh, and uh, just just even even if they uh, they didn't Rook uh, Hell is an incredible good matchup. Here we go. We are waiting on uh, just for them to say they're ready. Just want to make sure they are absolutely ready to go. All right, here we go. Here we go. 90 seconds at max, and we'll be in this game. And we'll see. We'll see if your prediction that bla bottom blazer. So if it is a blazer versus hail, how does blazer stack up against hail? Well, uh, I think it's going to be blazer with bounder. Uh, it pretty much depends on what we decided. If we see a racer, it's going to be a dual blazer. If we see a bounder, it's going to be a bottom blazer. Uh, how does uh, she... Well, it's a really hard matchup. Really, really hard matchup for the Blazer. I will give like around 80-20 to Hell. Uh, that will be my percentage. Wow. Uh, the Blazer is just is in so much risk at all given times. Hell can like you forward. She will tether him. He, he will pincer, continue the pressure, and uh, keep harassing with the Ws. Uh, yeah, and you know, Ferret, more than if, if it's going to be bottom lane hail, it's going to be on Ferret. Ferret is uh, not new to hail uh, by any stretch of the imagination. He's a very good hail player. Uh, so I, if it's an 80 20, uh, uh, you know, in favor of hail, uh, I really, really hope they don't put the blazer down there. I, I hope so. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, Ishrek might know this as well, that they are favor Blazer on bottom lane. So that might be why the hell was last picked right there. Possibly, possibly. So uh, we'll find out here in five seconds as we're about to jump into this match. About to jump in. Otherwise, I think the other lanes are pretty... Uh, are we going to see a Vermilion Trixie lane if that happens? Uh, I forgot to mention that. I'm assuming we're going to see a Vermilion Trixie lane, right? In the Bow, bow Ray. Yeah, we can... Uh, bow Ray is a very standard lane. Uh, well, uh, Vermilion Trixie used to be a very good lane. Right now, it's a little unorthodox. Uh, people are still trying to make Trixie work. Um, but, you know, the nerfs are, in my opinion, a little bit too much. Uh, Trixie is... Trix is just one of those heroes that creates chaos, and uh, that's pretty much it. You just have to play around it and outmaneuver her. Sure. I mean, there's there's a few people that still love picking up Trixie. Will be uh, really favors this hero. We can we see him picking up time and time again in competitive matches right now since uh, Papa Please has come back. I don't know. He's pretty effective on it though. He's pretty effective on it. Oh, no, I completely agree. Wobby is overall a super really good player. His position is fantastic. His picks are very good. But there is sometimes what I've seen that the actual nerf has affected his playstyle. And here we go. So we do have Ferret on Hale. Obviously, that's going to be the bottom lane. Uh, I don't think there was too much question about that uh, in their lineups here. They are see the all... Blazer on top. Uh, they are not putting the blazer bottom, so good on that. They are going to put it uh, on the bot. You know, they're going to put Rook bottom lane. So it's you know it comes down to Hale versus Rook, and I think that really just comes down to a skill matchup here. We'll see if Hooligan uh, can compete with Ferret in that one v one match. But this is a five man roam, looking for a pickoff here. Uh, they're not going to find it. But are they going to stick around uh, until they get a kill, or are they just going to go to lane? Well, their positioning on this bush might be get telling us that they're committed to this. Uh, oh, well, oh, no, just they, gotta, they decide to move. Did they get spotted there? Was that spotted out? I think that might have been there. They are, wow, they're really looking for this. Uh, well, it's 30 seconds at this point. They're probably going to start branching out towards their designed uh, lane. And we apparently were completely wrong, and it's going to be Trixie plus Ray. Uh, it's gonna be Trixie Ray. We we didn't get anything right tonight, Manti. Manti um, we got it all no, but wrong. No, this no, no. This is this is, might sound funny, but this is really good. 
adaptation to the other player's uh, habits is one is what makes it or break it. Sure, sure, absolutely. So how do you, does Ray Trixie lane work? Uh, I guess it's a, but it's a Carter Vex lane, by the way, which is kind of, I would not have expected that. I would have thought we would have had a Carter Bastion lane. But no, we have a Carter Vex lane. Interesting lane. That's a lot of slow coming out uh, on this team. If uh, Carter gets a Yak attack off into, you know, Vex getting that swarm shot, that could be pretty devastating. Yep, and it's definitely like uh, a lot of harassment, a lot of uh, a lot of movement that you have to do in order to dodge those rockets. Uh, I would like to see that Carter have a little bit of mana regen instead of just straight up power. Straight up, oh, that's a weird item. He just has one power shard. What is that about? What is he? What is he rushing? He's he's rushing something like an uh, opponent item. With or, or no, I don't know what is what is this gonna be? Why does he just have one power well, card? Well, we we can just simply imagine what is he gonna do because the strife is allows us to craft our items, right? So he could have something crafted specifically for this hero. Yeah, and, you know we didn't actually talk about it, but uh, Blazer, I mean uh, Bastion, Blazer Lane, could be very deadly if they're able to get a stun off on this Vermilion. I, there's really nothing Bo can do about it, and uh, Vermilion can just die. Yep, uh, by the time Bo gets his inner rage out, pretty much that Baron will be out. Absolutely, and uh, top, bottom lane here, you would I would assume uh, early game that Rook should be winning this lane. But it's not. that's not the case. Hale is farming 408 GPM to 277 on Rook. That Hale is is uh, dominating this bottom lane at the moment, and I would have at least assumed for the first, you know, five levels or so that Rook uh, would be winning this out at the moment. But look at this, just such aggressive play from Hale onto this Rook. And I mean, he knows he does, Rook doesn't have a health pot right now, and uh, Rook has to play very passively, and Hale's just going to keep the pressure on. Definitely. Look, what happens here is uh, he has Bounder. Usually the Razor um, manages to soften, soften up the pincer damage and allows you to stay on lane. But he doesn't have that region. As we, he also got his uh, health to cancel. So he's in a very bad spot at the moment. Yeah, what they're... And it, he, he's, he's not even... No, sorry, they're, they're really going in on this Blazer here. But Blazer using uh, that Bounder got away uh, just in time. And here comes the counter roam here. Bo is probably going to fall here from a rocket attack. Ray is in a lot of trouble as well. He does get the shock field out. Bounders away himself. And that's probably going to be the end of that engagement here. But uh, Blazer, uh, uh, well played by Blazer using uh, that bounder right at the last second, avoiding that shock field. Well, right. Here's the entire team over here. Vex is going to get a kill on the Ray. We didn't even see it. Everybody rotating into that top lane it almost, except for shock, is uh, sitting here farming it away. So there you go, first couple well, kills coming out, but again, here it is, oh nice kill uh, on Hale on a Rook there, just using the ult, just the Earthquake alone was enough damage to kind of finish him off. Yep, uh, he's he's going to have really rough time bottom, and we all know that Hale escalates super well in the late, late team fight. Uh, Rook needs items in order to be somewhat... Uh, his presence to matter, but he's he, apparently he's not going to get many items uh, at this at this rate. Yeah, he's not farming well at all. He's actually trying to uh, battle Hale here, but it's just he's kind of losing that battle at the moment, even under tower, even under tower. So uh, Derp is doing very well in this game, uh, except bottom lane. They uh, hopefully they'll get a rotation and a gank. Onto this hail at some point in the near future, because I think Rook is going to need some breathing room. And that Carter item was actually mana ring. It was a mana ring. Uh, I'm s uh, still very confused. I, did he pick up just one power shard and two health potions? Is that basically what he did? Uh, my actual two items are bugged. I cannot say what what he got. Uh, it's, it's all uh, I only see to power me. to. In, yeah, I only see power and two uh, plank items. Oh, I see all power. So maybe that's what he did. Maybe he wanted a power shard and still get his two health pots, but he wanted to rush the, an all power mana ring. Maybe. But that is we also see. 
but we also see a hooligan, one of the hooligans play on Blazer. He's gonna start getting some attack speed first. Usually Blazers tend to go more for power and then the attack speed. Let's see how this is gonna work out. He is. Well, he has power boots, right? So he got his early power spike by rushing power boots over, you know, fever boots or something like that. And uh, looks like he is. Is this gonna be a demon fang? Is this, I mean, it's a, not an un. Unheard of pickup on Blaze, so this could be just like a standard Demon Fang, and he decided to prioritize attack speed over power yeah, in the in the uh, component build. We'll see what it turns into. In middle, the, the Trixie, uh, the Trixie Ray, they're not doing bad. They're actually uh, keeping up with their counterpart. Yeah, they're farming up. Pretty, even though they had a gank onto this Ray, they're they're doing a pretty good job. Ray does have his uh, rocket boots now. So he should be a little safer. They're going to go in onto Shock here, onto Trixie, but they might try and turn this on to Taisuga. Is going to be fine. That shield saving him. But oh, here comes the imminent boom. It's not going to kill Shock. And he's, he has some mana, but T Rav in the background goes in onto uh, Vex and gets the kill. He has to be a little in a little bit of trouble here. There's going to miss the stun, but the top's going to go off, and the uh, Dragon's Breath is going to finish off the poor little squirrel. Ooh, so, the top lane we just see is uh, a huge miss of a ball ulti right there. Uh, the, they almost got a kill on Hooligan. Here comes Vex though, right back into the top lane. They're going to try and turn this on to TaylorMade, but TaylorMade activates those boots and just kind of walks away, and everyone is going to be fine. Uh, so almost a, a wasted ult there on Vex. It does get him back in lane because he does not have boots yet, but he might be just walking back to the mid in the moment here, unless they go for another gank. Oh, but Hooligan's going to get caught out here, but they're, they're not going to capitalize. They're going to back off. I guess they did see uh, Bastion in the background there. The stun comes out, but it's on the bow. And Chosen One uh, burned up even as well. There. Oh, Taylor made so low. Bastion wanted to make that happen. Just wasn't. But Viability, got to be careful here. He is going to fall. One more auto attack, all it's going to take. And Taylor made. he's got to be careful. He needs to get a health pot right now, or he's got to port back. Because uh, they can just go on him and kill him. And this yeah, tower's gonna uh, fall. Yeah, right now the pressure that Derp is putting out is, is very, very impressive. Because we were able to say they pretty much dove that ball. All the damage the bot took was on the tower. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, did we notice, by the way, that Vex, first item he bought, he rushed uh, that Cursed Wand. I kind of like that. Cursed Wand's so strong right now. Yeah, I, w that, I agree. It's very strong. I wouldn't have. Uh, rushed right away. Right. I actually prefer the teleport boots because this way, as you can tell, he's having meantime issues. So I would like to see him have more movement across the map instead of just slowing one target. Sure, sure. But uh, so we'll see if this curse won. If he, he has it now, he got it very early. If he's able to make plays with it though, then obviously it'll pay off. But uh, brown boots um, could hurt him a little bit right now. You know, he's the, uh, I guess Hale has brown boots as well, but He's in that 1v1 lane. He is hail. He's fine. With As he's the... getting up and on, he just got a deliverance. Uh, delivered. And as you can see, that's a beautiful postcard from hail. It is. Yeah, it is. Uh, hail has pincer, though. Is it on cooldown or is it not on cooldown? That's really going to be the big question. Uh, even if it is on cooldown, if Hooligan has a tether shot and can land it right now, they, they might be able to burst hail down before he, uh, uh, oh, actually, Sweeping Strikes is on cooldown as well. So all he has is Inertia Sword to give him that movement speed buff to get out of there. This is going to be an interesting interesting play here. Let's see how this unfolds. So he does not have Pinsir. There goes the Tether Shot. Couple broad attacks, and he is going to fall. Nowhere for him to go. So uh, good now, that, good that was the good break that that was a good break that Rook needed at that point. He was falling real behind. They might be able to take this tower, and this the gold is just keeping coming. That's middle lane. Middle lane. Uh, Shaka uh, using a barrel roll, getting out of uh, harm's way though. But Ray does fall. Just an imminent boom was used, and that was all the damage it was needed to finish him off. But they did take out Vex at the same time, so it was a trade. It was a trade. Vex does finish his power boots. Uh, so he's not going to have that huge, huge global map presence. He will have his ult, uh, which is off cooldown right now. 
Uh, but he doesn't have those warp boots, so once he uses his ult, he, his global presence is going to be uh, significantly reduced, you know, for two minutes or so. Yep. But they also got that bottom tower, so uh, if we see the gold graph, let's see. It's actually about 3,000 gold in favor of Derp at the moment. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. Which uh, is definitely a good lead, yeah. Yeah, the recognition of the Baldir fight that is about to happen uh, will pretty much start shifting the team fights and everything. So I want to see how each team is going to react to that. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to see a Baldir fight right now. It doesn't look like anybody wants to make it happen. No flex zone over here for Derp, uh, which I believe is Leyland. Is uh, no flex zone at the moment. Is uh, scouting this out. We'll see if a fight breaks out uh, or not. But I don't think it's going to happen at the moment. Oh, here it goes. Oh, derp. A shock, though. Going to get tether shot. Big fight coming in. Hale gets a nice alt off. And they are now in control of the map. And they might try and just take this out. But here comes uh, no flex zone from behind. He has the chosen one. He's not going to use it right now, though. And they're just going to defend this. Two and a half seconds on the Ray. Nobody here is to really uh, def uh, uh, capitalize on it. And all right, four on four in the mid lane. It was. Uh, I would have actually really liked to see no flex on to actually have ulted into all that a little bit maybe miscommunication. Yeah, but chosen one is activated now, and they're going to try and make this happen. They're going to go on Taylor Made, but the stun misses, and now no flex zone. It has to get out of here. Vex is actually ulting in the background here, and I don't know if this is uh, turning out well for them at all. But Ferret taking a ton of damage from that ult in, and they're just on their back foot at the moment. So this is kind of trading back and forth on these. Uh, fights with no real uh, kills happening. Isuga actually managed to get the kill on that Vermilion. Oh, Vermilion did go down. I apologize. Uh, that was good. And they might have enough uh, pushing power to finish off this uh, tower. It doesn't look like it, but they did get it pretty low. Uh, both of uh, ESKT uh, towers on bottom and top are being pressured as well by uh, a huge amount of creeps. Yeah, huge waves coming here. They're not going to finish this off. They're going to get a lot of damage in on it. And they really want this mid tower. It's so low. Uh, this could be bad, though. A derp could overcommit trying to get that tower. But it looks like they're not. They're just going to fall back, reposition, and uh, reset. I like the Bastion with the Wind Rush pickup. Uh, he, that allows him to be uh, very threatful. As he's positioning himself to the side. Oh, oh. T-Rap. Oh, no. He actually misses the stun, but it's not going to matter. He's going to go down anyway. And everyone else is backing out of this. Ferret's going to hit with another two seconds. Deliverance shots. Uh, Vex is going to die from that as well. And that's going to do that fight, it looks like. I don't know how, uh, but Leyland missed the Zydek charge on the Ray. I guess Ray either boundered uh, or rocket boots. Just, they, they like... Passed right by each other on the train tracks. It was very odd. Okay, what happens is that Bastion's uh, stone is, has one of the biggest animations I've ever seen of Venomova. Okay, so what happened is he casted the stone, but then um, Ray jo ro rocket boots at the same time. But because of the animation, by the time it went off, uh, Ray was already on the backside. Ah, uh, I guess. Yes, yes, okay. It looked, it looked very interesting, to say the least. Uh, but looks like Ishrek is going to rotate around and try and sneak off a ball deer. Let's see if Hooligan over here on Blazer is able to spot this. Rook is in the vicinity. Uh, this could be a this could be a bad fight for for this ball deer. Here's Hooligan scouting it out. He did he did see him, but they want this top lane. They want Taylor Made. Taylor Made doesn't know what's going on. They're going to get the t uh, tether shot off. Taylor Made's taking a lot of damage. I don't think he's going to get out of this because here comes the other Hooligan. And the Hooligan Brothers do their job. You gotta love it when two guys have the same name. <laughs> yeah, or whenever a, a, a player has a character's name that he's not playing. Oh, right, right, yeah. We, we've, had, <laughs> we've had that. Was it Vex, I think? We had a Vex playing yeah. something else. Clovis, uh, Vex playing Clovis. Uh, oh, yes. Confusions oh. all day. Oh, my God. But Derp uh, is doing a really good job controlling this game still. They, they've uh, had a gold lead and they've kept it basically all game. It's about a 5,000 uh, GPM lead in their favor. 
as long as they don't throw like a big team fight here and a Hale actually gonna use his CC break there. But here comes Vex, great Vex ult, but it's into a croaking curse, uh, which is okay. They're actually able to survive from that and they even take down Hale. Uh, wow, that Vex ult was so nice. I thought that croaking curse was actually gonna turn that fight, just wasn't enough, enough oomph on Ishrek's uh, part there. Yeah, without the Croaking Curse and without the Bo ulti, that would have end pretty much uh, caused them three towers here. <laughs> it would be terrible. Yeah, but yeah. Um, is, they ESKT managed to pull that off uh, just by one kill. I'm impressed that they only one only hell died there. Yeah, uh, that's that's a really good point. Yeah, that Croaking Curse uh, did its job uh, well enough in that regard. Because that Vex ult was gonna be huge. That was an incredibly good Vex all right there by Taisuke. He does play a lot of Vex. Uh, what is he building now? Uh, it seems like he hasn't really... He bought this Clarity Stone a while back. Uh, his GPM is not... It's not terrible. I'm curious what, what uh, he's saving up for. What, what See, do you that, think this that's is also one. Be? Uh, well, because of his Strife, right? It technically can be anything he wants it to be. Sure. So... Um, but I would like, as we can see, dampening cloak. A damp? What? Uh, what? Okay. Yes, right. it's a dampening cloak right there. Uh, it's a very valid dampening cloak whenever you see a uh, ray ult or you land into a stone. Yes, uh, Ishrek though, getting engaged on here by Hooligan, but it, I don't think he can finish him off. Uh, that's one problem with Blazer. You know, you can't, you're not going to 1v1 uh, a hail who can just escape from you. I find this interesting. Have you noticed what item Blazer picked up? He's actually going to go for another oh, wow. engage on the ferret here, but here comes Taisuga, gets the cursed one off, but it's, you know, just sweeping slashes away, or sweeping strikes away, and that is that. Hale gets out of so many uh, bad situations with this kid. But yeah, back to Blazer here. Blazer picks up a Shadow Veil. It's a uh, attack speed Shadow Veil, mind you, but he has a Shadow Veil, Mantikias. That is crazy. I, I I would have liked, I mean, uh, the Shadow, I can see where he's coming from with the Shadow Belt, but I would have actually liked to see the more power first. We were able to see that there were a couple kills that just escaped with 1 or 2 HP. If he would have that extra power instead of the extra invisibility, I believe they would have gone on those kills. Sure, sure. But uh, Shadow Belt means at when he gets his level 2 or level 3 alt, he could be invis 100% of the time on this map. With that shadow ball. Oh, Taylor Mate is gonna go down right here. Nice uh communication on the teamwork there. Derp Lord 420 on Carter. Getting a really nice double rockets right onto uh Vermilion with uh Blaze in the vicinity to finish it off. Yep, that was 360 no scope by the Derp Lord and Hooligan just picked them up. <laughs> and Hooligan made it happen, yes sir. Yeah, so Ish, uh, Ishrek is, they're just doing what they can to kind of play up their back foot here until they can get back in this game. They need to find a pickoff, or they need to find a really good team fight to make that happen. But so far, it's not. This, uh, this Blazer is doing a really good job of controlling the map and scouting everybody out. And Ferret's about to get scouted. No, Ferret is not about to get scouted out here. Not yet. There he goes. Ferret is scouted out. They're going to go right on the Blazer. No, he's going to back off. And no fight's going to happen. And then, of course, we have Vex doing what Vex does. Uh, doing a really good job split pushing. His ult is available if a team fight does happen. Yeah, so they're doing a really uh, good yes, job right now. Yes, it's technically available, but if, he, if something happened at this point, Taisuga has no mana. Uh, Mystic is of cold on at this point. So, whenever you're playing against a Vex, you want to keep all this on mind. The Vex man is pretty much what's going to tell you if he's willing to ulti and be a threat, or if he's just a nulti and you're just gonna get a kill on him. Sure, yeah, absolutely right. You don't want to you don't want to use your Vex ult in if you don't have enough mana to back up uh, your play once you get once you're in the fight. That's correct because it becomes just a stun uh, that you, you can cast from anywhere. But uh, really good players can just outmaneuver that so easily. Yep, so, uh, so Blazer finishes an all-power Zealot's Blade. Are you you happy with this now? Is this the power he's yes. looking for? And they're going to find a ferret here. That was a blind shot uh, into the uh, bush there. 
but he but Ferret's been going in there quite a lot, so no reason not to just throw uh, a blind tether and see if uh, anyone's been waiting. So what does Shrek need to do here? Shrek is they've been kind of just sitting in the mid lane here, and they're farming a camp as three, but they're not doing too much. They're not leaving this uh, tower for the most part. But right now they're trying to regain a little bit of the of the map, as you can tell they haven't get one of the towers, uh, and they're being forced to play together as a team, while Vex is just simply uh, doing that. And this is what they need to do, right? If you're gonna have Vex split push, then you need to turn it on him and make him pay for that, and Vex is dead here. No way Vex is getting away from this, but here comes the rest of the team. Blazer has the invis up. Does he want to engage? He's going to go in. Going to get a tether shot off on Shock. Shock is going to just barrel roll back, though. He's fine. Nice uh, Shock field coming up, splitting the team. And they're kind of focused in this bow, though, or, or that Bastion, who's a little too tanky. Hooligan, though, is going to get stunned out and death raid on. He's going to be okay. No, he is not. Viability going to go with the bow alt. And Bull rushes him down for the stun. That's what they needed. They got a two for zero engagement out of that, and they're looking very strong here. They might even be able to take a tower. Yeah, they lost top tower. Hooligan landed a beautiful deliverance all the way from top there, but they were not able to capitalize because the team fight had already happened. Yes, yes. So is uh, can Ishrek get this tower? It's so low. They do so much damage, but here comes Verm uh, Vex in the background. Shock is in a bad position. He's going to fall down. Taylor may trying to get something going here, but he's taking so much damage just from Vex alone. Here, and he's going to go down. One more auto attack salts needed. Is he going to be able to get away? His uh, oh, nice shock field by Ray. No flex zone is continuing the chase. He's going to have to back out now. He's taking a lot of damage, but he should be okay. Vex is still looking for a play to happen, and he is going to take out Ray, who overstayed his welcome. Very powerful anti-matter shield right there. He has a lot of power. Uh, he's a little bit tanky, uh, magic-wise. So he's capable of going this this aggressive on Ray, even a low HP. Yeah, I mean uh, that that dampening cloak alone. He's got this health crystal now. Oh, he finished off a rune scepter. Yeah, Vex is doing very well at this uh, stage of the game. Let's take a look at the GPM chart again. So even though even though Ishrek had a really good team fight there, they almost took a tower. They weren't able to finish it off though. It's still a twelve thousand gold lead in favor of Derp. Twenty one minutes in this game, no generators down. Uh, that's that's a pretty big lead. And we can tell right now uh, the Rook is back into the game, and he's so dangerous. He's about to finish up his Russian maze, I believe. And uh, right now we see Hell. He. He's falling down every by the minute. They need to uh, commit to one team fight, uh, try to get as many kills as they can do, get that uh, Cinderella right there, and um, from there on try to pressure them. Come back really, really strong. Yeah, the, uh, Hale's been just trying to set up team fights, waiting in bushes for a gank to happen, but it just it's never happening. And uh, absolutely, his his farm has fallen way, way off. Uh, he should be the one farming this bottom lane, not Bo, right now. But he is in the mid lane instead. So they, they're still trying to make a play happen here. They really want to pick off. It's just Derp is not falling for it. That's a beautiful cheeky play right there. I, I love how he's, he's scouting bushes with uh, the leash. And if there is somebody, you see the rocket, uh, the rocket's going up. No, absolutely. But here comes Viability. He wants something to happen. He has the inner rage off, but it's just not in range uh, to land the stun anywhere. And they're going to fall back. Hooligan, though, has so much... So much invis uh, with this build, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun to see. Basically, he can be invis all day long once he hits uh, 15. Or actually, I think uh, even 11 now. He should have 100% visibility if he wanted to. We also see Taylor made with that uh, void. T Rev going. Oh, just gets annihilated there. Chosen one activated in the background, and Ishrek just kind of melted in the background. There goes an Everwinter Charm. They're taking a lot of damage. And there's just so much disable coming out here for Dirk. They're charging him down. Uh, Taisuba, though, got to be a little careful. They wanted that, but it's just not going to happen. They're going to get this uh, tier 2 tower, I think, as well. Yep. It, Taylor made activated that Void Key way early when they tried to do the 31st skill. Uh, but, as I say, I, if, you, if your uh, carries are not able to put that pressure, you're just going to get bullied around anyway. 
There again was a void key. This time, though, I think the void key timing was pretty damn good. He thought uh, Hooligan was uh, throwing the tether shot onto him. Uh, so he basically void keyed that, even though it's going to hit viability. But I think the stun... Uh, I don't. I don't think the stun is going to hit. It is mid charge, right? This is a Zydek charge on the way to try and hit. I don't know if that's going to. I think the the, the stun is going to miss. I don't know. He doesn't it's really have to hit because he already has uh, casted the chosen one. As you can tell, the chosen oh, yes. one is being uh, cast right now. So even if if also that misses as well, you have Rook that is just going to finish up the job right there. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. I think both of these guys are dead. Viability did use a CC break, so Pinsir was used on that tether shot. He actually might live. Uh, it's just going to depend what Rook does. Rook could just right-click. Uh, I don't. It's hard to tell if Rook has... Did he just activate his Q to, to, to uh, hook into here to... Uh, yes, he he used in order the position, but as you can tell, that little feather traveling between the uh, him oh, yes. and viability that is from a hide and seek that is going to proc his E, and then another hit is going to finish it. Even if that doesn't do it, Hooligan is just going to do the job. There, in my opinion, their bot should be dead here. Yeah, let's see. There is one kill, and there is the second kill. Yeah, absolutely. And a tower for it. This actually might be a generator if they... Nope, they're going to fall back. They're going to play it a little safe and go for Sindara. Is my guess. They're on top with the Giant's Visage. Oh, that's pretty unorthodox at the moment. Uh, who got a Giant's Visage? Uh, Vex. Vex going tanky, Vex. A Giant's Visage with a Dampening Cloak. Uh, what do you think? He... It, that's that's uh that's interesting, but we have some fighting going down in the bottom lane here, and Ferret taking a ton of damage, just not enough. Uh, T Rap trying to get a death ray off, but missing everybody, and gonna have to fall back as well. They are holding off this tower push at the moment, though. But here comes Hooligan again. Invisible is gonna scout out. He has two seconds left on his tether shot, and not gonna find anybody. They're just gonna back off this. Yep, um, Derp is pretty much ahead at this point. Uh, you you can see uh, Carter has already Hexbane. Even if uh, Hale goes in and tries to cast an ulti, he's going to get Hexbane. If he pincers, probably a stun will happen right after. Yeah, absolutely. Derp is almost 20,000 gold up over Ishrek at the moment. Zero generators down. That is a huge lead. That means that everyone on Derp is uh, is just doing so well. But here they go. They're going to go on Taisuga. I don't know if Vex is going to get out of this. This is a pick off. This is a really good pick off that they need to make happen. And they can turn this into a tower as well. Uh, I don't know if they can though. They're so so low still on the power scale. And T Rap taking just a ton of damage here. But here he goes. Chosen one activated right in the middle. But a nice croaking curse kind of uh, completely nullifies uh, the entire alt from from Bastion, but it just does not matter because Rook cleaning up in the back. Yep, yeah, Rook, Rook went uh, through his uh, hook, then after that he crit twice and then hide and seek crit another two times. He melted him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was a really good croaking curse usage there. The, the problem is Derp is so far ahead in this match, it's almost impossible for Ishrek to make a team fight happen. And here comes Vex, uh, just trying to get back in the fight, maybe get a pick off, but they're gonna get a uh, generator here. No question. Oh, Viability, trying to make something happen, but unfortunately he just gets a uh, one in the alt and then he gets hex baned out. And they get a kill and a generator. I mean, I'll give it, give it on him for trying to make a big play happen. Because that could have been a huge turning point if uh, he would have got three or four in that alt. But uh, Derp, uh, uh, you know, just dodging it. Yep, that, that was very good movement. And after that, the reaction just of the Hexbane. He doesn't recognize his ball as a threat at the moment. Because they know that they're that much ahead. Even if he was to eat that uh, stone like we, we saw, his teammate will be there for him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, of course. Of course. This is, uh, I, I, like I said, you know, Ishrek uh, won a game off a day. So this is awesome seeing Dirk coming back strong. Want a win. I like seeing it. Oh, T-Rab, though, is in a little bit of trouble here. Taisuga is just going in on him, and he's going to get a kill there. 
This that vex. is the power of a curse one. It's just you get there and pretty much if you have jumped away, you're not getting out. Yeah, this Vex is not scared to just go up a hill. He has 2,500 hit points on this Vex. That's pretty big. He's going super tanky Vex right now. Oh, no. And uh, Taylor made going to go down there on Vermilion. And they're just going to finish off this this Sindara when they want. But here they go. Oh, Ferret. Going to have to use that pincer just to get away. And he's trying to run. Uses his ult. He's, oh, he's not even able to go back in. Because Derp Hooligan on Rook gets a crit off. It looked like, I think I was a crit. And they're going to get another tower. They don't even care about Sindar at the moment. Because they can go finish that at any time. So yep, the rotations uh, here on Dirt very good right now. Yeah, they recognize that the hill was was lurking around. They went looking for him, and they got it. It was very, very good. And are they just going to try and push in another generator right now? in uh, Instead of going for Sindara. Okay, they're falling back. Yeah, I will opt for the safer route, which is Cinderella, and then just simply wait for the Bex ult. Actually, Bex ult has 92 seconds, probably won't be back by the time Cinderella is. Absolutely. So, is is there anything Ishrek can even do to get back in this match right now? Oh, and no! Hey, Ray, hey, you oh. answer your own question. <laughs> oh, no, Ray, oh, Ray. Oh, no! Oh, no. <laughs> Both, uh, Ray, that was just a bad positioning on Ray's part. He should not have been trying to get Vision down there. That should have been Bo going there. Yep, as you, as you, the only thing that they can do as Ishrek is actually not even them. Their enemies has to do mistake. At this point, absolutely. Derp is the one who has to throw this game. And uh, Hexman coming out on Ferret, but here goes the Chosen One activated, but there's no good choice. They're going to have to switch this to Viability. Oh my god, three and a half second. He's going to have the bow, uh, uh, bow dash away. Oh my god. That was such a good, uh, um, Rook ult. Did you see that Deliverance hit? Yep. The tar you know, just the physics targeting involved, the geometry to uh to uh predict where Bo was going with those rocket boots was was nicely done but oh unfortunately derp is just so far ahead right now in these team fights it's almost impossible for them to lose one yeah it was a very uh hell as you can tell they already know where he's at they're, they're not scared of it uh it was a sweet and sour escape because even though yes they escaped they used so many abilities just to get out yeah yeah absolutely he might as well have just died there, because with all his kit down and so low, he was out of this fight. There goes Generator down. Nice shield coming out onto uh, Carter there for the save. And this might be game right now. There's only two up. They still have the monkey pushing. I don't I don't see Shrek coming back in game 